So this week is a little bit different in that it's a Japanese game, but it's not a Japanese game. And I gotta say that I was expecting to get a lot of flack from this review. Uh, I wasn't even sure if I was gonna do it or not. And once you know the premise behind it, I think you'll understand why I was walking on eggshells here. Three reasons. Dating sim. Disabled girls. 4chan. Yeah. I know. So yeah, this is a touchy subject. Everyone I talked to, when I told them the idea behind the game, that it's a dating sim where you date disabled girls, well yeah, they told me pretty much all the same thing. That it sounds like a really bad idea. And I thought so too. I mean, the idea started on 4chan, and that's not a place that good ideas usually come from, folks. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. There's a dojin manga artist that goes by the name Raita, who, in the back of one of his dojin, drew an idea that he had for a dating simulation game where you date disabled girls. He drew the girls, some of the ideas for gameplay, and left it at that. It was then discovered on the online site known as 4chan, and people started talking about how the game could be played. They drew pictures, they gave ideas, it kind of grew from there. And like many other things on 4chan, they talked about the sex scenes and how they might actually happen. And it just degenerated from there. But some people decided to actually try to make a real game. And over the past five years, it changed and grew and evolved until it became what it is today, Katawa Shoujo. Now there's a lot of controversy in Japan over the name. Katawa Shoujo literally means crippled girl. It's a very derogatory name, and some people won't even touch the game because of it. We seem to have no problem with it because we don't know what Katawa Shoujo means. It sounds nice. It sounds Japanese. But if the game were called Crippled Girls here in the US, then yeah, it probably wouldn't be as popular here. So why not change it? Well, I talked to one of the creators and he said that they chose to keep the Japanese name because, well, that was the name that Raita wrote down on his drawing. It's his idea. And he's Japanese. And to tell you the truth, no matter what they would have changed it to, it always would have been known as the Katawa Shoujo game, because that's how it started. So they decided to keep it. But if people can get past the name, you'll see that the resulting game is so much more than just that name. You play as Hisao, a boy who is attending high school in a Japanese town. A girl confesses her love to him and, well, he quite simply has a heart attack. Not figuratively, he really has a heart attack. At 17, see, Hisao has heart arrhythmia, and as a result, he has a very weak heart. Doctors decide to send him to a school that has nurses that are on the spot should anything happen in the future. It's a school that will help him get better and help him learn to cope with his problem so that he can lead a normal life. And that's one of the things that changed my mind instantly about this game. You aren't some sleazy kid who wants to sleep with disabled girls because that's his kink. You're at a school where everyone happens to have a disability. And that's not so strange. Here in Colorado Springs, we have the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind that's been around in the Springs since 1876. Anywho, along the way you meet other people who go to the school. There's Shizune, who's the student council president, and her interpreter, the pink-haired Nisha. See, Shizune is deaf, and not everybody at the school can use sign language, so her best friend Misha acts as her voice. Then there's Emmy, who's on the track team, and she's the fastest runner on the squad. Also, Emmy has no legs below her knees, and runs on special prosthetic legs. There's Lily, who's a senior, and her class is student representative. Lily is proper, posh, very polite, and she has no sight. Lily's blind. There's Rin, who's a part of the art club. She's made to be an astounding artist. She uses her paintbrush with her mouth and feet, because Rin has no arms. And then there's the skittish little Hanukkah, who is burned terribly on the right side of her body and wears a constant reminding scar. 
So as the game progresses, you discover more about the school and hopefully make some friends with the other characters. Sometimes they might grow into romantic feelings, and sometimes they'll just turn out to be just your friends. But you'll know you're on the right track if you spend some time with someone at the festival. But if you avoid people and feel sorry for yourself, then you might just end up alone or with... Ugh, Kenji. Which will give you a bad ending. Now, if you're new to dating games or visual novels, then it will help you to know that just getting a date for the festival is not the end of your trials. You have to keep your new friend, and you have to make that relationship grow. And in this game, it's not done by trying to be a gigolo. Well, you could if you wanted to be. Actually, the choices that you're able to make here are very limited compared to other games in this genre. And that's what makes it feel more like a visual novel than a dating sim. But once you get a girl to like you, you shouldn't try to be a white knight riding in to rescue the poor little girl. If you do, you'll be sorely disappointed. These aren't poor little fragile creatures that need to be saved from their disabilities. The problems don't stem from their disabilities. The problems come from their everyday lives. And they've been dealing with their disabilities a lot longer than you have, Buster. And once you learn that, you'll find that you'll progress in this game a lot easier. And this is what makes Katawa Shoujo so special and meaningful to a lot of people. It's not a porn game. Okay, there's sex in it. But it's a very real dating sim, and the disabilities almost fade into the background while you play it. And it shows that people with problems like these girls have are still human, and they shouldn't be trivialized just because they have differences. It helps you know you should never have pity for someone who has a disability. What they need, what everyone needs, is just a friend. But don't be thinking that this story is only about disabilities. This has a lot of character to it, and each girl's storyline is filled with her history, sweet moments, and... Yes, if you do well, a little sex. Not gonna lie, the sex can sometimes be a bit awkward. Not because of the disabilities, mind you, but because of the... situation. I mean, that while the story is filled with tender moments that will most likely bring a tear to your eye, the sex just sometimes feels out of place, and you almost wish it wasn't there in many cases. Yeah like that. But on the whole, they may feel uncomfortable, but they're handled pretty tastefully. The group here went in looking to make a full-fledged porn game, and several changes of the guard later came out with a very well done creation. Some of the people who worked on this game hadn't ever done writing of this kind at all, and some had never played dating sims or played visual novels before. The music is well crafted and plays melodically in the background. I usually don't play games with the game music in the background because I don't usually care for the music. But this is actually pretty good and even when it loops, you get a good vibe from it. I rarely turn it off. Now one of the things that should not be dismissed is the art. And I'm not just talking about the drawings. I'm talking about the actions within the drawings. It's a small thing, but the animations of the characters when they're sitting, jumping, or coming into frame to talk to you really adds a lot to the feel of the game. It's small, but important, and I'm glad that they added it. Also, they had said that there would be no animation for the game, but each girl has a cutscene with animation. It's not the best animation, mind you, but for a game on this scale, it adds a lot to the gameplay, and it's well done. Now, from my discussion with one of the writers, it was very difficult for them to find a good team to create the art. It could have very easily turned into a text-only game with all the problems that went on throughout the five years, but when they settled on a final artist, it all came together, and it shows. One thing I don't care for when I look at animation from people who are trying to draw in an anime-ish style is that the heads look flat and all the faces look the same. But not here. Each girl has her own look, her own feel, and they look good. The emotions from the girls are shown in their eyes, in their faces, where it needs to be. 
It's not over exaggerated and it's not superfluous. Now, this is not to say that the game is perfect. There's not a lot of decisions to choose from, and that makes for more of a story that you are watching instead of participating in. Some of the sex scenes seem very forced, and many of the characters seem to act out of their personality in many instances. But what is amazing is the fact that a place that is known on the web to be kind of skeevy has produced something so nice of this nature. And over the past five years, there were many times that it could have just fallen apart and disappeared. That people might have just left the team, not been replaced, and the project would never see the light of day. But it didn't. It's here. And you can play this.